Ali. This is a DC comic. Remember DC comics? You might have forgotten them after 12 videos of Marvel ones. This is the first part of Metal Dark Knight, which was a big DC crossover from about a year ago, maybe two years ago. Uh, at the time, I didn't mind. I thought it was an enjoyable story. But I have a feeling that rereading it will make me change my mind. It will make me change my opinion. Uh, first up, I will say I, I love this cover stock. DC did it for like their big books. It's, it's really nice. Like the, the glossy card cover. It's really nice. Uh, this is written by Steven Snyder. And on one hand, it is Steven Snyder by the numbers. Him revealing some secret history that has been kept hidden away for centuries. Uh, here we have this opening bit tying in with Stephen Orkman, all about the Ninth Metals and stuff like that. While in the modern day we have a scientist in a science lab on, on a science island. Well, a volcano has gone off, it's erupting. And Batman, he has got to save the scientist. This, this issue, the art. The art, it, well, it's a jam issue, which means when there's like a bunch of different artists doing different pages. Uh, there is Greg Batman, he is great, this is him. Uh, we've also got Jimmy Lee later on. Uh, we've got some Junior Junior, we've got Andy Cuball. Uh, the opening flashback bit, that was Andy Cuball, I think. Uh, this page, I think, might be Andy Cuball as well. That, Acro Man looks like him, and uh, Batman looks, well he's screaming, that's kind of like Andy Cuball's thing, but it looks a bit Greg Batman, it might be both of them on that one. Uh, the story is, we find out that the scientist, he was working for Wayne Industries. Uh, Batman, he is trying to work out the greatest mystery in the history of mankind. Uh, Jimmy Lee, he draws this page here, the Green Lanterns bit. Uh, the Smurf tells Jordan Albert to go to Earth and try and stop Batman from screwing up the universe in his pursuit for answers. Uh, he gets into a quick fight with the Black Robert, who is wearing his awful cosplay costume. Let's uh, see, this, here, this, here, this page. This is basically an advert for the new Immortals. The series from the New Age of Heroes, or as I like to call it, the New Age of Zeros, <laughs> original. Uh, this series, the New Immortals, it was cancelled immediately, like after the first issue. Uh, we got some more Stephen Hawkman stuff here. This is uh, this is Andy Cuball again. Uh, you can always tell because he puts the lines on like uh, Stephen Hawkman's mask like that. Uh, Stephen Altman, he came out of this whole crossover, kind of revitalised. Uh, part of the problem with this issue, though, is the frequent art changes. Uh, all these artists, individually, are good, but the switches are completely random. It makes no sense. Here, we have got another Stephen Altman page, and this one is drawn by Jimmy Lee. Except the last three Stephen Altman pages were all drawn by Andy Cuball. Uh, then we are in the back cave with Junior Junior, but on the next page it's Greg Batman. Uh, Mr. Terrificals, him and Elastic Man, they are in the story as well as like a subplot, uh, effectively just to set up the Terrificals. But it did actually work. It got me interested in their characters. It introduced me to them. Uh, Elastic Man, he was in this egg form. But despite all this build-up in this issue with Mr. Terrificals and Elastic Man uh, and Stephen Hawkman even and, and Green Lanterns and Black Robert, none of this really affects the plot of the main story. Uh, the new immortals as well. They they weren't in it. Uh, this here, this art, this is Junior Junior. Even though Jimmy Lee, he did the last scene with these characters in. Uh, Batman, he has been searching for these secret answers to the secret mysteries 
of the secret multiverse that secretly stretched back for secret centuries. And Green Lanterns and Black Robert, they're all being told about it by a secret, mysterious voice that's obviously the Joker's. Uh, we really are all over the place here. Stephen Hawkman again. Uh, we're setting up like a million things and not really dealing out with any of the pieces. Then we have got Batman. He goes to the Fortress of Soulful Tunes to speak to Superman. He wants Superman's help and Miracle Man as well. He is there. Because you see, Batman, he has got a super secret safe room in the Fortress of Soulful Tunes. And only Miracle Man, the master escape artist, only Miracle Man can break the locks and get inside. And inside he has got this big secret science machine to unlock the secret multiverse. Meanwhile, Green Lanterns and Black Robert, it turns out it was the joke as it was talking to them. Bet you didn't see that one coming. You might think that all this adds up to a bad comic, but I can't explain it. I like this. I, I think I think it is intriguing, and it sets everything up really well. Uh, this this is basically just the mystery box approach, the the Jar Jar Abrams approach, like Lost. But I I am fine with that. This this brings together different odds and ends of the DC universe. And you're wondering what's going to happen next. Even though most of what we got here doesn't even matter in the end. It's not really important at a crossover. And that's, I wouldn't really say that's a fault of this comic. This set up a story with potential. And I originally thought that the setup for this story was much better than the actual story. And I think that's still definitely the case. Uh, by the way, I said this comment was when I first met Mr. Terrificals and Elastic Man. That was that was a wrong turn of phrase. I've obviously read them before. Uh, Elastic Man was in Van Morrison's Justice League and Mr. Terrificals. I've got his blooming first appearance. Uh, I mean, it was like my introduction. It was introducing the readers to their characters in this story. That's what I meant. I rate this seven thumbs up, but I rate my mistake seven thumbs up.